What if you could save money, save resources, and never be lonely? Uh, that is, I think, the billing for one particular group of uh, pod living communities, three of which are now in Los Angeles. Let's take a look at what they mean. It's not about this location or building the next one. We're trying to build a community, a social network with physical addresses across the country. And we want a minimalist co-living space, something like your neighborhood bar for beds. I just thought, what would a traveler want? And I drew up the must-haves for my dad. He and a bunch of couch surfers built the first pod share. And then I realized, actually, this startup wasn't about social travel. This startup was about curing my loneliness. I never wanted to have a night without friends. So I thought maybe other people would feel the same way, especially when traveling. So if you've ever lived in a hostel, but also wanted to work, do your office work, this is kind of like that, I would say. It's essentially, I would say it's a lot like a, a hostel or maybe a, a capsule bed, the, the male-only capsule bed in Japan. Um, but they, it's actually a closer mix between male and female division, about, I think, in the 50s for men, 40s for women, so it's close. Uh, basically, each little section has a Murphy bed, napping station, Xbox 360, and 24-hour access with a keypad code. Uh, the beds turn into desks, and there's an interesting rule, no sex. Um, I think, like, I don't know, man, I feel, it feels like the article gave this a bad rap. I feel like it, it, was, it was sort of like preaching this doom and gloom about, uh, about like, tech individuals and, like, sort of, like, tech moving into these places and, like, Tech people Is living this tech in... people? I saw it as like travelers. Yeah, well, the the, the article kind of made it feel like, well, look at the look at the coming doom of tech people ruining everything that we like because they spend so much money. And it, it, it was like, there's been a lot of articles re about this recently of like mm -hmm. the the transient tech worker who stays in hostels uh. and then like w because you can't get rent anywhere in San Francisco. Well, this um, is all LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But our rent is increasing too. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, but I am perfectly okay with this because I just see it as a not shitty hostel. I see it as almost a cult. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I saw, okay, look, cult. I saw zero hooded robes in that video. I saw no sacrificial goats. There were no candles in the shades of pentagrams. I think we're good. I mean, I'm going to try and look on the bright side of this, which is... <laughs> What it would do is, I mean, there is some kind of like existential loneliness mm -hmm. in, in inherent in living alone and maybe a, not a ideal apartment situation. Kim, I guarantee you that I have talked to my cat more than I talk to most people. Well, who doesn't? <laughs> You're just saying what we're all thinking, which is cats are the best. Yeah, that's right? true. That's, that, yeah. that's actually what this article is about. <laughs> that, that's what this piece I, is about. You know what? Tell me about your cat, Kim. Can you bring a cat? to this pod-based community? No. Because it seems like no. And that's <laughs> no. a deal breaker, no. ladies and gents. Um, I, it's, would you, it's, okay, would you stay at one of these? No. Really? I need privacy. Okay. I have to be alone. I need, I, I, I just need some time to myself for it to be quiet, to mm. feel secure, to feel like I'm fine. And I would always be a little bit on alert because I'm surrounded by all these strangers at all times. Okay, if you were on vacation mm -hmm. and this was an offer to you, and you didn't know anyone else in whatever city you were staying with, would you stay here? Possibly, though I do think we might have different opinions on traveling alone, just inherently. Right. I mean, it may be gender-based, it may be experience-based, mm -hmm. but I, I don't want to travel alone. Okay. I would prefer to travel with a friend or a family member. Got it. Okay, cool. So, so you wouldn't, like, you'd get the pod bed there, they get the pod bed there, you'd make a couple of friends in Barcelona, you'd go out for drinks, have a good time. I mean, it could be fun, but... It's, it's a not shitty hostel. It's a little... It's, it's a little bit outside my comfort zone, and it makes me feel a little bit unsafe. Right, yeah. okay. Um, I would do it. Yeah, I would I'm sure do it. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't do it as a, <laughs> as a long-term thing. I, I don't necessarily consider myself an extrovert. Um, but, I mean, it, it would be cool, like, if I was staying... You know, if mm -hmm. I was if I wasn't from Los Angeles and I was visiting Los Angeles, and I know I got I got this big thing about like trying not to do the touristy stuff whenever whenever I visit somewhere. Like I try I try I always like existing as someone exists in a city mm -hmm. instead of like I don't know, man. Like you've been to the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That place is horrendous. It's terrible. Yeah. I would no, just avoid it. Yeah, that's the worst place in LA. So I don't know. Like I I like the idea of like 
getting to meet a bunch of people and getting to share an experience with them. Yeah, I mean, there is a, there is an inherent value in that. I, I'd see that, too, which mm -hmm. is, I mean, you could make friends for life. It could turn out real bad. It could turn or out real good. Or a serial killer. Or a serial killer. Who knows? I you're really mean, rolling the dice. You really don't know. You don't know what you're going to find. You may make a friend forever. You right. may get stabbed in your sleep. Mm -hmm. We don't know. It's a lottery. Uh, I mean, but that's that's not exactly what this is about, which is, I mean, we're thinking about, like, hostels in general. Mm -hmm. This is more of, I mean, you could live there for a week, a month. You could live there permanently, as uh, the woman in the video, the creator of this, did. It's kind of just like a co-living, co working space mm -hmm. kind of like an office where people rent space or yeah time and then but it's just all the time mm -hmm. so i i could see the draw to this and it's also i mean it's probably uh, 35 to 50 bucks a night that's pretty cheap yeah man. but then i mean if you look over uh, for a month it, it could be in hollywood the prices are fifty dollars a night but in downtown la they're 35 a night 225 a week and 900 dollars a month i think i could find roommates for less than $900 a month. In Los Angeles. I could. I could. I know someone who does, and I could do that. My my first two years in Hollywood, I spent living inside of a friend's kitchen pantry for $250. Are and you I, Harry Potter? No. No, but it was a terrible, it, no, it wasn't a terrible living situation. I liked a lot. I just didn't have a door, and it was an eight-by-eight room. Um, but uh, what I'm trying to say is um, that was the cheapest rent I ever got. Yeah. And My sister used to live in someone's uh, nook between their dining room and their living room. Oh, God. So I, I think you and her would get along. Um, I mean, it's it's not for everyone, for sure, but it is for some people. And are you those people, audience? Would you live in a pod-based, shared community, co-living space? Let us know below in the comments if you think it's going to catch on or not. And please like and subscribe for more.